Okay, welcome to the Swing Trading with Cycles channel. We are going to do an update on Franco Nevada today, FNV. This is we're going to do a we're going to do a, a few individual gold mining stocks. We did a video about silver mining stocks and you should if depending on what platform you're on, you should see an option to click on a link in the upper right hand corner right about now to go to the playlist that has all of those videos, seven individual miners core mining, First Majestic, Fortuna Silver Mines, uh, Pan American Silver, Endeavor, Hecla. So a smattering of them. And we'll also look at pre wheat and precious metals um, on the you know gold side. And we're going to look at Franco Nevada because this is one of the bellwethers. This is one that tends to rally before other miners and before the metal. And so we'll start with the annual chart. The twenty, the the every candle is one year of price action, and so this start chart starts on two thousand in two thousand eleven. That's your first candle, and it is red. And then we go all the way to this year, twenty twenty two. Now, two things that you'll notice, and this isn't super different from the gold chart itself, is that twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two have been green years, and this is November twenty nine, November twenty ninth, twenty twenty two. This video is going to be a, is going to be relevant you know, a year from now easily because we're looking at the big picture, folks. So this candle here is your 2020, 2020 candle where we had the big COVID rally, and then we had the pullback, as I always say on this channel, ad nauseum. A pull up a upper wick is always a pullback on a lower time frame. Let me know we had the top of, in, in August, and we'll see this one maybe maybe this one actually ran a little bit longer. So the high for that year was 166 and the low was $77. And so we did make a higher high this year. We went to 169. So and you can see that wick piercing the range, right? So we made a slight higher high lit by literally three bucks. But that's good to know. We made an all time high in 2022. So it's like, OK, well, generally making new all time highs is bullish, right? The problem here is that a it was a very slight new high again, just like three dollars on one hundred sixty six dollar stock. Right. And also look what happened after that. We got a, a net, again, a big pullback, just like this one. And that is somewhat concerning because what that tells you is you end up with a lot of sellers at those higher prices. Right. Those higher prices can't sustain because you have too much selling pressure. And although, again, this popped up here just a little bit. So we technically broke out of the range. This has basically been consolidating inside this range since 2020. So not great if you're just like long, long term, but you certainly could have been in worse names. You could have been doing much worse. But what that sets us up and we think about as we think about next year is next year, 2023 candle is going to open as an inside candle. We know that for a fact. Now, the only way that that wouldn't be the case is if somehow we made a new low this year. So we went below. The low for this year was 109.70. So, and we're at 141 right now. So, we'd have to drop like almost 40% in the month of December for that to happen. Or if we make a new high, which is the 169 that we talked about. So, that would be almost $30 up from here. So, we'd have to either drop by almost 40% or increase by almost 30% in just one month. So, it does seem unlikely that we're going to break out of this range before the end of the year, which means. We're going to end up with a 2023 candle that's inside that starts inside. And just to be clear, when I say inside, I mean inside this range. Right. Looking at the 2022 candle, which, again, is still inside this larger range from 2022. So, again, consolidation. But but you could say this is a bull flag, right? Like that's the that's the bull case. But no doubt this has been tough ride. Right. You're like, oh, my God, we're going all time highs, all time highs. Nope. And it's like, oh, no, no, we're going lower. Nope. And. A big doji of a year. Not not fun to be to be trading that. So that's the monthly. What does the quarterly look like? So we talked. OK, so that big upper wick on the month on the yearly is this pullback right here on the quarterly. These last two quarters. This is Q2. This is Q3. And this is your Q4 candle, which hasn't closed. Good news on this, though, is we do have a three. Uh, we have we have a excuse me. We have a quarterly swing low on the board, right? Boom. And notice these lines remain. It's because, you know, this is the multi time frame analysis in action, folks. That range that we just showed of 2020 is just really these 
like all these candles are just a detail for that range. And you can see we've just been chopping around, like just literally just chopping, chopping, chopping inside this wide range. But we do have a quarterly swing low. To be fair, this was also a quarterly swing low right here. That was back in Q1 of 2021, right? We got that quarterly swing low um, the next quarter and we didn't go anywhere, right? We just kind of stayed put. And that was, isn't that ironic? That's, I mean, I should, I should say, isn't that interesting? That's about the same level, right? The swing low for Q1 of 2021 was activated above 133.15. And this swing low that we're uh, that we've just established is above 135.19. So very similar levels here. We're gonna have to see if there's more follow through. If nothing else, you could maybe we maybe get a test of the upper end of the range before we continue to kind of oscillate within here. And this makes that bull flag look even clearer, right? This is a bull flag on the quarterly chart. Hard to say it's not, right? You've had this big move up. So this is looking like this has been a frustrating trade to be clear but not something that isn't doing well. Like still, 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 um, again, better than a lot of gold names, a lot of other gold names and, and precious metals in general. That's your, that's the swing, that's the monthly swing low I just drew here that's causing that quarterly swing low. That's how it works. A swing low on a time frame is caused by swing lows on lower time frames that have gotten follow through um, in the direction of the move, right? So that was, that's your swing low there, boom. Um, and so we're trying to take out this stuff, right? Um, so that's your that's your monthly chart. And you can see this is our 2020 or yeah, this is our 2020 top, like our COVID top. And we basically just have, and we know that from looking at the annual chart that it's really just been a series of like, this is a triple top, right? I mean, look at your, like that's a top, that's a top, that's a top, all at the at basically the same level. So as we try to approach this again, are we gonna get a quadruple top? Right. Or is this going to be the time we can finally kind of break above that? Right. Like that's the that's the real question. Um, so that's your monthly. And if you think about um, the, the, the long term cycle for gold, same kind of idea that maybe this is our long term cycle. And again, we did have this swing low here that actually produced a rally that lasted about four months. Right. So, you know, you had four green months. You had one red month in between it. But notice we just kind of chopped around after that and then had this double bottom kind of situation. So we want to be vigilant for that kind of thing. And then if we zoom in to the weekly chart. So on a weekly level, let's just map this out here. So this last weekly cycle had a top on week 11, bottomed on week 35. So that's a pretty long weekly cycle. And this isn't exactly the, this is a very similar count to GDX as it usually is. So we bottomed on the week of September 26th, and then we had one. I mean, this is like almost an identical candle that GX saw. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's the same count. So we have our high on day on week on week eight, and we're looking to see are we going to be able to make a new high, or is this our top for the weekly cycle? And you know, we're just kind of zooming in further and further. This is just an inside week week so far, which is the same thing we're seeing for GDX right now. Again, this is the week after Christmas. We've had a bit of a breakout that we're kind of consolidating. So week eight of the weekly cycle. And then if we think about the daily cycle, this is interesting. Looks to me like that's it right there, which may means we are moving into a daily cycle low is my guess here. Like we have a top on day 43. That's pretty long in a daily cycle, right? All right, so you had this whole rally. I mean, this is an ugly pullback that was really scary. But you essentially have this rally that's topping out here. And so just like it's an inside week, it's actually also an inside day, right? And the and the, the range on the inside day is high of 143.80 and a low of 139.23. So as gold names go, and this is also above the 200 day, 200 day moving average, which you cannot say about GDX, I don't think. Right, so GDX is right below the 200 day moving average and this is right above it. So that's a very clear bullish um, difference, right? That we're consolidating above the 200. So even though, even if we are moving into a daily cycle low, which it would make sense that we would be maybe into like the 135 area that you know it, it does appear that it's setting up for a higher low. So now let's look at the ratio charts. So on the left-hand side, we have Franco Nevada itself and we had already looked at this chart. These, 
let me just refresh this page. It's not cooperating. So we're going to have the, on the left-hand side, Franco Nevada chart itself. And on the right-hand side, the ratio of Franco Nevada to GDX, its peers, to see are we outperforming. And we'll also look at SPX just to kind of get a quick sense of that. Okay, so let's look at the annual chart, the 12-month chart. We just looked at this. Um, oh, this is reset to Silvercrest. So that's FNV. That's FNV divided by GDX. So you can see, again, we just looked at this chart. We've had, you know, unfortunately, some frustrating doji action the last two or three years. But the ratio chart, man, look at this thing. So in 2020, we had a really ugly bearish candle. And just to be clear, when this is going up, it means Franco Nevada is outperforming. And so you had these years of massive outperformance. So even though this was just like chop on the, in absolute terms, you did way better than GDX did it with, by being in, in, a, in, in Franco Nevada. And these last two years have been, have seen upward, like 2022 is making a higher high above 2021. Whereas for the absolute chart, it's really just kind of consolidating side by side. So this is telling you this is outperforming. And if we look at the three month, the, the quarterly, again, we know there's a quarterly swing low in place in absolute terms. For In the case of the ratio chart, we actually have a swing low all the way back from 2021, from January 2021, when we started kind of outperforming. So that's looking really bullish. And on the monthly level, um, yeah, very similar kind of picture here. So again, so th this is that period where we just kind of really outperform and then we've gotten into a much more kind of sideways grindiness here a little bit, but this appears, so this is this little bit of consolidation. Like if you looking at the annual chart, how we're making a higher high, I'll go back to that. Actually, you would expect, I mean, the way this chart is shaping up, like the odds favor that the next candle would be something like this, right? like an up candle, we would make another higher high on the yearly chart, which means we would be making higher highs on all time frames, right? Think about that. If we make a higher high on the yearly chart, then by definition, that's going to be a higher high on monthlies, weeklies, dailies, you name it, right? And so that's what it looks like it's setting up. And the thing I would call out is all of this is inside the range of 2020, the same way that the absolute chart is also inside the range of 2020. So that's important that, you know, in 2020, Franco Nevada kind of wobbled versus GDX. It didn't do as well but it's now kind of rebounding. looks like it's trying to set up another one of these moves. So when the gold, all that to say, when the gold mark, gold, when, the, when, the, when we know for sure that we have our precious metals bull market, we have our eight-year cycle low behind us, you'll want to make sure you're in the names that are outperforming. And right now, this looks like it's one of the ones that's set up to do that. Franco, Nevada, not a huge surprise, but it's helpful to see the specific levels and understand how do you look at that from a data-driven analysis perspective, not conjecture, emotion, et cetera. So, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for, for watching. I, I guess actually before I do that, I'll just look at FNV versus SPY. Is that looking? Oh, God. That's a chop zone. Oof. So Franco Nevada versus SPY, big down year in 2013. And since then, we've just been kind of inside that range. We briefly poked our head above it in 2020 with the COVID rally. But since then... We've just fallen back inside that range. It is of note that this is a bullish outside year, right? Where we made a new low, but we also now made a new high and it's green. So let's zoom into like the monthly chart, for instance. Right. So you are seeing, and this is a series of higher lows, like swing lows, swing low, now a higher swing low. This is holding as another like higher low. So positive action. So not only is it set up to outperform GDX, but you imagine, I mean, in the gold bull market, certainly you would think gold is going to outperform GD, um, the stock market as a whole. And obviously, if you're in the best performing name, you'll be doing even better. So this is also kind of promising. But this is helpful kind of visual. Look at all this chop. When this finally breaks out, you imagine this is going to run for a little while, right? Same as the gold bull market as a whole. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching.